Hey, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm an intuitive and healing arts coach, and I'm here to give you the Leo information. Oh my God, this is like a lot of Leo right now. Hence the lion background. I am personally a Leo, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Leo stuff that's happening right now. So, and I will show you the Venus star point cycle on my app. So stay tuned. I'm going to talk about the eight, eight lines gate, which is today and the Venus star point and just a lot of Venus stuff happening right now. And a lot of Leo stuff happening and a lot of not normal stuff is happening right now. So we are definitely in and out of portals, a lot of timeline shifts and a lot of heart opening and activating activation stuff. This is my new remote. So let me know if it is better audio for those who have been following and listening to my videos. Um, and I will talk a little bit of, uh, about the new moon. Uh, it is my birthday next weekend. And I am planning to go to the Joshua tree. So I may just make a video over there about the new moon, but I wanted to just start it now. So today is the 8-8 eight, eight Lions Gate. And this is the time when Venus star point let me go back. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let's get some. Okay. So this is the chart here for today. Now today, this is where the sun and Venus is, is pretty much like tapping, tapping to a new cycle. So when Venus and the sun come together it's called a it's called a um it's a kazini okay and then what venus is going to do this next weekend on the 13th is go cross the sun venus is going to come out of being an evening star into being a morning star and the Venus star points are, are different than your sun or Venus in your birth chart. Like I, my Venus is in cancer. My star point is in Gemini. And so those that have a Venus star point in Leo were pretty much birthed after 1987. So... 1987, I have this chart. So if you're curious as to what your Venus star point is, you can drop me a DM. But if I look right here, uh, the first Venus star point was August 22nd of 1987. So if you're born after that, in certain dates, you could be a Leo Venus star point. Definitely if you're born August 22nd, 1987 to June 12th, 1988 is when it switches to the Gemini star point. And so it switches, the star point switches every four years as uh, Venus um, crosses the sun and um, goes from an evening star to a morning star. And pretty much when Venus in Leo conjuncts the sun, it's a new cycle for Venus. So I'm not going to get too much into it. I mean, there's a whole freaking book about Venus star point. I took one of, uh, I learned a lot about Venus star point quite a few years ago. And I went out to, to, um, to dinner with Arielle Gutman. She was in San Francisco at, um, the, the, um, uh, NCGR. Okay. So. 
Where was I? Oh yeah, I'm gonna take my phone and I'm gonna show you this cycle. So as you can see, I have it on years, okay? So this is gonna happen every four years. So you have to think back, let's go back. Let's go backwards. One, so this is 2022. 2021, 2020, 2019. So you could think, what were you doing in 2019? That was the beginning of this cycle that we are ending now and beginning a new one. And then you want to look at 2015. 2015 was an ending, I believe, of the cycle. See how Venus is retrograde too? It's like what's happening this weekend, this next weekend, August 13th, when because v- Venus is retrograde now. She doesn't retrograde every year. And so this was the last time Venus was conjunct the sun retrograde. So think back to 2015 so you can we can count back years and then we have 2011 which was another sun conjunct venus on 8 8 okay Lionsgate. so let's see what was happening in 2015 for you okay 2019 was uh, the Venus conjunct sun, but not retrograde. And now four years later, we have Venus retrograde conjunct the sun. So that was at 15 degrees, 23 degrees, 15 degrees, 26 degrees. So this is actually the most similar to what's happening this year, 2023. So 2015, yeah, I was definitely wrapping up some some major shifts in my life. And I actually moved into the place I'm at now in January of 2016. So There's just uh, little tips and tricks that you could use with astrology to try to predict your own situations. So I wanted to show you that I could pull up the new moon too and just show y'all what's going on here. So the new moon is happening on August 16th in Leo at 23 degrees. So you want to look at 23 degrees. You want to look at the last deacon of Leo because that house is going to be activated because of the new moon and the Venus star point switch and Venus retrograde and (laughs) and Venus uh, Kazemi and um, it goes from an inferior con- conjunction, I think, to a, uh, uh, an, what is it called? A superior conjunction. Okay. So, Venus star point in Leo is August 13th. We have Lionsgate portal today, which is all about just shining your light, opening your heart, and... Venus is going to square Jupe, but I want to talk a little, oh, that's on, sorry, I'm like super tired. It's at the end of my solar year. Uh, August 22nd will be Jupiter square uh, Venus, Venus square Jupiter. Okay, so this, I'm going to switch this so y'all could see me. Okay. So the Venus star point has started in 1987, which is kind of funny because that's when there was a lot of colorful stuff and hair, come on, the 80s, like fanny packs, like 
flips, like side ponytails, like fabulous bright colors. And that kind of goes with the energy of Leo. Now, Leo is a fixed fire. It is a summer uh, sign. It's the fixed summer sign. And the glyph is kind of like a lion head. Okay. It represents a lion's mane. It's masculine and it's yang. And it's about shining bright. It's about your presence, your stage presence. A lot of Leos are actors and artists. It's also about color and flair and leadership and royalty. And if you are a Venus star point in Leo, your greatest assets are you radiate like the sun, inspiring others with luminescence and leadership, a power of attraction and tendency to fame, bravery, ageless beauty, style and sophistication, and ability for romance and creativity. Now, the greatest liabilities is the pathway or channel to your heart is of utmost importance. So the Leo star point for the sign rules the heart. So obstacles that keep you from getting there are the tendency and the need for constant attention and pampering. Once you embrace the equality of all people and can assess and serve the needs of those around you, your heart opens wide and the world is at your command. So are you a are you a Venus star point? If you don't know, you could go ahead and DM me. But this is kind of like a, well, you can't really see it, but there are dates and it's not just straightforward. And you can find those online too. So with the star point, you have the head, the arms, which is the creative, and then you have the feet of the star, which are the karmic. So you could even look and look at this picture. Oh, that's for mine. It's Gemini. So right here is the star because Venus, she moves around the sky in the shape of a, a star, a five-pointed star. And we are all five-pointed stars. If you if you count our head, our two arms, and our two feet. Now the head would be the star point. And so it's switching to Leo. Then you have your right arm, which has Libra and Scorpio, and your left arm, which has Gemini and Taurus. Those are your creative partners. Then on your feet, you have your right foot, which is Sagittarius and Capricorn, and you have your left foot, which is Aries and Pisces, and those are your karmic partners. So you have the feet and the hands of the Venus star point. So life mates for a Venus star point would be Leo Capricorn star points. And this isn't referring to your son. So don't get it mixed up. This is referring to the star point. So a Leo star point with a Capricorn star point are life mate partners. Like they, they're longevity because they're karmic. They have the feet involved. And then the hands, the creative star is Leo star point, Scorpio star point, Libra star point, Gemini star point is the longest. So if you're a Gemini star point and you pair with a Leo star point, you're the longest partners for creativity. And then you have Taurus star point. So it's very interesting, the star point stuff. And it talks about the different star points with the other star points and their relationships. So I'm going to stop with the star point business.
Okay, so I forgot what I was talking about. This is like really crazy energy for me. Uh, okay, so yeah, there's just a lot coming up around this Venus and Leo stuff, a, a new cycle from eight years ago, from 2015, um, and the Venus star point switching to Leo out of Capricorn, which is huge. It's going to be like a huge shift in energy uh, this weekend on my birthday. And don't forget to watch the biggest meteor shower of the year. It's going to be in the sign of the Perseids. Uh, so you definitely want to look up into the sky and uh, check that out. It should be earlier in the day this year, but you want to do that on August 11th because the peak is on the 12th. So you want to be out there maybe on Friday night all the way up to the morning. You'll see up to, I think, 90 meteors an hour, which is great. Today also is the big mega millions. I can't believe it's up to like a billion. So um, it's really, uh, you know, good energy for uh, abundance. So I'm going to try to buy a few tickets, a lot of tickets. I think it's mega. I think both of them are pretty fat right now because they just keep carrying over, I guess, because there's no, there's no winners, but, um, yeah, the Jupiter and Venus square that's happening at the end of the month what is that on the 22nd, that's going to be kind of hard energy to get anything responsibilities done because you just want to like have fun and lounge and, you know, you just want to be careful on spending money and like, um, being too, too gluttonous, I guess, eating too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mercury is going to go retrograde on August 23rd and that's going to be in the sign of Virgo. So you're going to want to look at where Virgo is in your charts let me see here. Change it to the days. Okay. So it's going to retrograde at 21 degrees. So look at the uh the last deacon of Virgo. It's going to retrograde all the way back to see wow eight degrees of virgo so it's gonna go all the way through virgo so just look at where virgo is this is where we're reconsidering rethinking um having some more slow down so if it's in your third house it might be car difficulties or anything about your communication mix-ups with people arguments you just really want to be careful to use your your uh, words slowly, you want to think, you definitely want to look at contracts before signing them. It's not like the best time to go sign a huge contract or make a huge purchase at this time as Mercury is slowing down. But if, if, if the deal's there and it's all feels right, then make sure to just like look through that contract because Mercury retrograde, we can, we can lose and miss out on some of the things that are important. Oh, another huge thing is we have two full moons, okay, this month. That is rare. So the first one, we have two super moons, actually. The first one was August 1st, a super moon in Aquarius. And we have the next full moon at on August 30th in Pisces. And that is a super blue moon. So that's going to be extremely um, abundant and rare and there's just a lot of blessings in this month of august and a lot of timeline shifts portal shifts portals like there's all kinds of things that are changing and i really feel that it's really changing for the better if leo's involved then it's just going to be like so much more fun and i'm hosting paint and sips i have one in crockett on august 18th which is a friday at five o'clock and then I have another one in downtown Martinez at the wine lounge, William Welsh's wines. It's like a tasting room. They have a winery. 
uh, in Martinez. So we're supporting local business and his wines are fabulous. I'll be having a paint and sip there on August. August 30th, actually, on the full moon in Pisces. And it's on a Wednesday at five o'clock. So happy hump day. If you want to come out and uh, support me and have fun and support the local wine and uh, paint a beautiful painting, it's going to be, definitely have some water in it because it's water is Pisces energy. And the one on August 18th is going to be inspired by Joshua Tree. So that one's going to be probably a desert with a Leo lion of some kind. It's going to be pretty amazing, guys. So if you want to have an Eventbrite, but you could also, uh, for a discount, Venmo me the $55. That includes your first glass of wine. And yeah. So is there anything else that I wanted to, to say? No, I think I covered everything. I'm going to pull some cards real quick. Do a little roll. 11. Ooh, Saturn. Okay. And Virgo. So anyone has Saturn and Virgo. I do. I have Saturn and Virgo. So Saturn is the planet of restriction. Okay. Dedication, hard work, also um, long-term relationships. Okay. Because they're stable. Uh, Saturn is stable, which is ruled by Capricorn. And then Virgos are the healers of the Zodiac. They're mutable earth. They are harvest. And the 11th house is future plans uh marriage is found here and friendships and networks so it looks like there's going to be a lot of this uh kind of relationships that are there's a lot of, i think a lot of relationships that are coming to a completion and an ending and there's new ones starting there's new contracts starting so this is a time when even like more like karmic type relationships are coming into our life and a lot of karmic relationships are ending. Harvest is completion and the 11th house is friendships and relationships. Um, different than the seventh house, seventh house is marriage and business partnerships, but 11th house is friendships, networks, and future plans, which is like marriage too. Because we all want to marry our best friend, us Leos, right? Okay, I'm going to give it a little shuffle and see what the, the cards have to say. And I've been having heart palpitations. I think it might have to do with the with the X-class solar flare the other day. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's marriage. Four of wands, that's stability. That's, uh, uh, God, ace of, of swords. This is great for communication. And magician, like we have everything that we need. L literally, there's things that are coming through. That Those are three beautiful cards. Things are coming through. Um, communication. We just want to be very direct in our communication. We're also getting a lot of information from above. But the four of wands is stability. You have the couple. They just got married. They're building a, a foundation and a life together. The Ace of Swords is air card. This is about communication and air. And the Magician is a Mercury card. And it it's like we have everything that we need to manifest what we desire and want. So this is the second deck. The Empress, abundance and money. We're just like, sit back. After you've done the work, after you've worked in the field, you sit back and you collect your harvest. You watch it grow. That's the Empress, the Four of Wands. So we got it twice, okay? We can't we can't make this shit up. So the Four of Wands is the highlight card. There's one more card that came out. The Two of Pentacles. So this is going this is done. This is over with. 
two of pentacles is wavering and just like not knowing what the payoff is pentacles is our abundance in our money and then you have this this big water wave in the background and it's like a roller coaster it's like the roller coaster is finally coming to an end the emotional roller coaster and the finances they're coming into place for for us and the abundance is here and so we just really want to grab it while it's here and we just know that we're always provided for. We don't need to stress out because stress only multiplies more stress. We want to focus on abundance and that the universe is always supplying us with what we need. And like energy is cannot be created nor destroyed. So we always have everything that we need. So don't worry about anything if you're stressed about money, finances, um, relationships, relationships come and go, right? And there's some that stay forever. And um, moving company, huh? Someone going to be moving out there? Or maybe you're just moving on. But it's going to, whatever it is, whatever you're feeling that you need to move, move out of the area, move on to, a different job, move on to a different relationship. It's going to bring a lot of good luck because that, that big sign was like, it was like a four leaf clover on that truck. I've never seen that kind of moving truck before, but whoa, I caught it with my legs. Lex fictitious power symbol to create lucky serendipitous events. So just really be open. It's a really Great time to go explore, go have fun and get creative, journal, any ideas, write them down because these, these cards that just came out is extremely abundance. This is extreme abundance and whatever that you've been wanting and desiring. So if you've been praying for a partner, then, um, and people are leaving your life, that's a sign <laughs> that you're getting what you desire. So if you're in a relationship too, and you, you, you're you wanting more, more abundance in your relationships or something like that, and there's a breakup, then that's the universe making that happen for you. So you might not be seeing it. Sometimes we're not seeing it the way that we think that we're going to see it, but it manifests. But First, you've got to clear out the old out of your life. You have to, you can't, you can't find something with holding on to the wrong thing. So that's what I got for you. You know, Leo is about the, the heart. It's all about love and romance and children and creativity. And it's the child of the Zodiac. So really, really tap into your childlike soul and spirit figure out what it wants and really like manifest and make that happen, especially in this Leo season, even if it's just for a month to be like, I'm going to put aside all my responsibilities and I'm just going to have fun. And I'm going to let the universe take care of me and see what happens for you. But I just want to say happy birthday to all my fellow Leos. If you'd like to come out and celebrate uh, your birthday with a paint and sip in Crockett or Martinez, please DM me, or you can go to my Venmo, Venmo $55 to at lucid living coach. And just write down what date, if it's uh, August 18th in Crockett or August 30th in Martinez and Martinez, they hold a lot of space. There's like 50 people can fit in the space. I'm only trying to sell 40 up to 40 tickets. It's going to be a big turnout. It's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be fun. I have quite a few friends going there for my birthday. And also on August 18th in Crockett, it's at the township. I can only hold about 10 people right now. Uh, we could move it out into the garden. And so if there's more than 10 people, I could try to make that happen. So I look forward to seeing you guys. And thanks for stopping in and watching my extremely unorganized video of craziness that's going on in my head while I am at the end of my solar return. I will be a brand new woman when I get back from Joshua Tree um, next week. All right, I'll talk to you then. Peace out, your loose living coach, Karina.